We have an old expression in Italy that's been around ever since the 14th century, at least. And that goes, rendere pan per focaccia. That's the equivalent of saying, taking revenge for something. Am I bringing this up because this video is about revenge or taking revenge? No, obviously not at all. I am bringing this up because today we are making some pane and some focaccia together. And if this scenario looks somehow familiar to you, that might be because you came across or you watched this video here. Go check it out if you haven't. I wanted to recreate somehow the same setup because today we're gonna dive one more time into some really cool recipes. Like, this is gonna be a juicy cooking video, like big time. You guys probably know how much I love cooking and I'm also usually not afraid to do some experiments here and there, try new techniques. However, one thing that has always freaked me out is what we call i panificati. Those preparations stress me out because I know that there's like real science behind them and you should at least educate yourself a little bit on the subject and you should also learn to be very careful and also very patient because all the preparations take up so much time so, as a personal challenge for my birthday this year I asked my parents to get me a really nice and detailed cookbook one that's entirely focused around bread and all the goodies that you can make by just mixing up some flour, water, and yeast. I picked the three recipes that I found most interesting and also most iconic. La focaccia tradizionale, il pane, an easy version, and il pane, yeah, I know, an advanced version. And I thought it would be fun to give them a nice very first try together. Because yes, guys, this is gonna be my very first time trying these recipes out. I'm gonna take this huge leap of faith for you and like follow along as best as I can because I thought if these three recipes come out successfully good now, now that I'm basically blind dating them, it means that they really are good recipes and they are trustworthy. So you can rely on them with a light heart and know that all of your time and your energy will be well spent or maybe not. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so these are all the ingredients we're gonna need for all the three recipes. And as you can see, it's not really much. We need, the key ingredients are room temp water, yeast, and flour. Actually, you need to be a little picky with the type of flour you choose this time. I don't know if you know, but flour is categorized uh, depending on its strength. And we need medium and strong flour for these recipes. We need to be very tactical with what we decide to do first, and in general with when we decide to do what. So let's begin with the first step regarding the advanced version of our bread. All right, so I'm gonna put some flour in here. Here it says W350, so it's a strong flour. We need 350 grams, 3.5 grams of fresh yeast. of water. Put it in here because we need to melt the yeast inside the water. Oh, made a mistake. Oops. And this is to make la biga, which from what I understand is a sort of dough that will act as a starter in our actual bigger dough. And we don't need to touch it too much, just have to make sure that all the water is absorbed. So I guess that will do. Okay, we cover it up. Okay, now we have to let it sit for 24 hours. So, little biga, we'll see you tomorrow. Do you see this empty spot on the table? Well, in a matter of a few hours, there will be a beautiful focaccia here instead. Let the magic begin. In this bowl right here, I put 400 grams of medium strength flour. This is W260. 9 grams of yeast. I crumble the yeast on top of my flour and then I add 280 grams of room temp water. I combine them all together. But again, the goal here is just to get them together without worrying too much about the texture of the soon-to-be dough. Okay, and now 
Now I will wash my hands and grab the plate. Be right back. Okay, I put the plate on top of my bowl and I leave it like that for 15 minutes. Okay, so now I need to add 12 grams of salt and two more tablespoons of water as well. The recipe says to squeeze the dough, which is honestly a little sticky, a little too sticky. In my opinion, two tablespoons are a little too many. <clears throat> Hello guys, editing future barbs here. I just wanted to confirm that yes, two tablespoons of water are definitely too many. After recording this video, I made focaccia one more time and tweaked the recipe a little bit because as you'll see, some of the steps didn't exactly work out. But yeah, I'll step in and tell you more later on. Okay, more or less. I put the plate on top as if it was a lid and I wait for another 15 minutes. And now it's time to add 20 grams of olive oil. All right, so it's definitely more smooth right now. It's more a dough than the mixture that it, that it was before. But just like before, lay it on top and I'll see you in 15 minutes. Ooh. This is where we're at and now it's time for some GV BPA. I understand there are several techniques to do so, but what the book says I have to do right now is basically fold the dough over itself without taking it out of the bowl. And I need to turn the bowl by 90 degrees and keep repeating the same thing. I feel this dough is way too sticky. Anyhow, I believe I have to cover it up again and wait for 40 minutes. Let's have a look. Okay, you know what? And from this moment on, you'll see me do things I wouldn't have had to do had I just put less liquids in the dough. Here you can see the changes I made to the original quantities. If you follow this updated recipe, you wouldn't need to use the Flat slap and fold technique that I decided to try here as a backup plan. Because your dough will have the right texture from the very beginning, this will allow you to simply repeat the same coil folds process we did before. So then you'll go through that 40 minute break without worrying too much about the outcome. And more importantly, you wouldn't need to do any of this. Adding more flour to your dough at this point is the last thing you want to do. Don't ever. Trust me, use this recipe here and making focaccia will be a breeze. What do you call this? Like a baking pan? I don't know. I'm gonna put some oil and some sim semolina inside. One cloth. Now I will put this in the fridge for one hour and a, and a half. Okay, it's not as beautiful as I thought it would be, but still, we have one last step. All we need to do is like grab the edges and pull them towards the tray. Okay, it's nice and soft. Okay, so I hope you guys can see. At this point, we have to cover it up again and let it set for another half an hour. All right, so it's like... 15 minutes later, I set the oven to 220 degrees Celsius. In the meantime, I'm gonna prepare the blend that we're gonna put on top of our focaccia. And just a pinch of salt. Okay, what we need to do now is create the, you know, typical holes that are on the surface. And in order to do that, we just literally have to sink our fingers in the dough. The fact that I see some bubbles coming up on the surface might be a good sign. I'm going to top it off with my blend. I guess we're ready to throw this in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. See you in a bit. All right, so it's not that bad. It's not perfect, definitely. Let's cut this beauty open. Well, it's soft. I don't think it's exactly well risen. This was supposed to be way more airy. I'm sure I did something wrong, but I'm kind of okay with it. It's 
not the worst focaccia I've ever had. It's a little too crunchy for me. However, I would rate this result like a 6.5, maybe 7 out of 10. Which is absolutely nice. But again, if you tweak the recipe like I showed you, you can easily get an 8. Like, hands down, look at that. Look at that. That. All right, so thank you, Focaccia. You had your little moment, but now I'd say it's time to make the bread, shall we? It is time to move on with the first steps of our easy bread recipe. And the recipe is basically made of two big chunks of things to do, divided by a 10 hour break. So we're gonna complete the first part right now and continue with the second one tomorrow morning. It's technically supposed to be an easy recipe because everything is gonna be done inside a bowl. It should be all pretty easy peasy, but as usual, let's keep our fingers crossed and let's get started. First things first, 400 grams of strong flour to be precise. Four grams of yeast. And we crumble the yeast inside our flour. All at once, in here goes 310 grams of water. Room temp water, as usual. And then we combine everything together. The mixture is supposed to be pretty uneven, so it's technically won't be a dough yet. This should be good. And now the recipe says to let it set for 30 minutes. So we put this thing here, grab a plate, cover the bowl, and take a 30 minute break. Now, ooh, now we add eight grams of salt. We mix it vigorously, vigor, vigorously. Vigor wow, you can really feel the dough getting together. Like water and flour are pretty well combined by now. And just like we did before, another 30 minute break. All right, 30 minutes have gone by and now it's time for some Giri di Piege. We have to complete two full rounds of Giri di Piege, but this time we're gonna use a different technique. So all we need to do, we need to picture a square inside the bowl. We need to grab some dough on one side and pull it towards us. Then we turn the bowl by 90 degrees and we do the same thing. This whole GDD Piege thing is uh, supposed to give the dough more strength and more structure as well. Again, we know the drill, so plate on top of our bowl and I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. And we are back. So, this is where we're at. Now we need to do another round of GDPA. But this time, only one round will work. All right, now, before letting this rest for like 10 hours or so, we need to seal the dough. This is gonna sound more complicated than what it is, so let me just show you. I grab some dough over here, some, I hope you can see, some dough over here. properly, I'll be back in a sec. Alright, okay, so now all we need to do is cover the bowl with some fill. We throw this in the fridge, let it sit for 10 hours, so technically tomorrow morning we'll sh we should wake up to a fully risen, very happy dough. I guess that's it for today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is the next morning, even though it doesn't look like it, because it's pouring rain, and it is time to say good morning both to our biga and our easy bread. Dough. So, because we're going to make one loaf of bread with each of the two preparations, I thought it would be interesting to make the comparison of the two processes even more clear. And in order to do so, I'm going to work on them at the same time. Parkour! Please welcome on this side Barb's working on the bread, the advanced version. And on this side, Barb's working on the bread, the easy version. Let's go! I call the process on the left advanced, also because it requires some sort of equipment. So while the first Barb's takes out her stand mixer, puts on the dough hook, and starts mixing up all the ingredients as written on the screen, Barb's on the right can take care of her glorious easy dough. The only thing there's left to do is to shape the actual loaf of bread. After putting some semolina flour on your surface and detaching the dough from the bowl, you give it a more round, regular shape, then you pull 
the edge facing north and you fold it towards yourself. At this point, you can go on as if you were braiding the dough. So you take a little amount of dough on the left and you pull it right and vice versa. And lastly, you fold it again, repeating the first step twice, just like that. What's important here is you remember to seal the dough before putting it aside. So press the seam on the bottom really firmly. Back on the left side, right on time to add some water and some salt. Now, the goal here is to get the dough strung. In Italian, we say the dough is incordato when it doesn't stick to your bowl anymore and it becomes really how can i say this compact so you just need to keep it going change the speed from time to time and be very patient this definitely took a hot minute in the meantime barbs on right put some semolina in the bowl with a cloth and she's now gently placing the dough inside keeping the side where the steam was facing up barbs on the left has started off the slap and fold process and the advanced recipe doesn't say for how long you need to continue so she's just keep going i guess hey barbs on the right hold on wait to cook both the versions of your bread you need a dutch oven like this one because it can get extremely hot and keep the heat and steam inside so leave it in the oven at maximum temperature for one hour before using it and back to the recipe barbs on the left is trying to seal the dough the book says you should cup your hands and move the dough towards yourself but another third is on the table Anyway, she puts the dough in an oiled bowl and on the right, Barb's very happy with how the easy dough turned out after the two hour break. It's time to score it on one side with a knife and follow the instructions I left here. Ah, look at that! But wait, Barb's on the left still has a lot of work to do. She completes one full round of coil folds, seals the dough at the bottom and covers with a cloth. After the break, she goes on with what's called the pre-shaping. Here, you're supposed to use both your hands. The one with the special moves from 5 to 12 o'clock as it pushes towards the dough while the empty hand tucks the dough under but as you heard she's not having a good time so she tightens the dough by shaping it regularly and then she just tries her best she covers with a damp cloth and then proceeds with the regular shaping again dusting the dough with some semolina flour she presses on the seam to seal the dough and then she places it in the bowl just like it happened for the easy bread It really is, because as you can see, you have to wait another three hours before finally getting the dough ready to be cooked. I remind you again to leave the pot in the oven for one full hour, and then you can go on according to the instructions on the screen. too much. I really like it. And I can totally see this like toasted with some olive oil on top or some cherry tomatoes or some deli of your choice to make, you know, some bruschette. This is actually really good. I would say almost an 8 point, no, a 9 out of 10. You should, you should totally try this recipe out. Okay, time for the advanced version. I would expect it so much more from the consistency because of, you know, all the process, the vega. Yeah, this is really, really good. But you know, I would probably rate this an 8.5, maybe an eight. Not because it's not good, like it's delicious. But compared to this one, there's not that much of a difference. And this took us so much time. I don't think it's really worth the effort, even though it's delicious, but I, I think I like this one better. Talking about favorites, because we're all done with the recipes, let's wrap it up with some final thoughts and conclusions. This was such an interesting and challenging ride, and I'm really glad we managed to get through all of this together. I don't know how you feel about these recipes, guys, but honestly, even though they were a little less detailed and accurate than they promised they would be, I still can say that these recipes are quite legit, especially if we take into account that this was the very first try. Like, we were testing them out for the very first time. And what about you guys? What recipe did you enjoy the most? What made you think, ooh, I wanna try this one at home? Let me know in the comments and if you do end up trying one of these out give me your feedback i would so much appreciate it i am so curious i'd love to know how your versions came out so please leave me a comment it's always lovely to hear from you anyway
Anyways, that was it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and for joining me on this one. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.